Another feature of servlets is being able to implement what are called listeners. So what are these? What are listeners? What are servlet listeners? They're new in the servlet 2.3 specification, therefore available to us in the 2.5, the servlet 2.5 specification that we're currently working with. They became part of the J2EE 1.3 specification, therefore they were available in 1.4 and are currently available in the current Java EE5 specification that we're using now. Listener objects for servlet listeners. Uh, servlet listener objects use the standard Java listener interface. Listener objects are notified when certain events take place in a web module, particularly when we're talking about working with servlet events and servlet listeners. For example, uh, when the web module starts up or when it's being shut down as an HTTP session is created or destroyed. There are two main types of servlet listeners. There's the servlet context listener, which allows you to inject logic to perform one-time initialization at the web module level, for example, to look up a data source. So the servlet context listener, as it says, is working with the servlet context object, which is loaded and destroyed, as the web module itself is loaded and destroyed. There's also a session listener, uh, which you could use to keep track of how many sessions get created, removed, or are currently active. Just as the name implies, what we're talking about here is listening to the behavior of a session, of a particular user's session. Let's examine the nits and bits of listeners. For a servlet context listener, if we're listening for servlet context events, a new servlet context is created because the web module has been initialized by the application server. A servlet context attribute listener is a piece of code that is listening to the system for when an object has been put in or deleted from the servlet context, particularly attributes. Remember, attributes can store complex Java objects. So the system is uh, listening for us, or we're registering to listen for an object being added to or deleted from the servlet context, particularly as an attribute. A session activation listener is, of course, uh, watching for us and listening for us when a new session is created, when a session has been invalidated or timed out. We also have a session attribute listener, which just as the name implied, is listening for an object being put in or deleted from the session context rather than the servlet context. So how do we write a servlet context listener? First, we develop a Java class that implements the servlet context listener interface. The key methods of this interface are context initialized, which is the logic that the server will call when we implement this method, called right after the servlet context singleton object is created. If we also implement the context destroyed method, this would be called by the server right before the web module is shut down. Notice that both of these methods receive a servlet context event object. From the servlet context event object, the local variable being named here in the example SCE, from the servlet context event object, we have uh, various utility methods available to us, including get servlet context, which would allow us to go from the listener to get a handle to the servlet context object if that's what we wanted to work with. If we're writing a servlet context attribute listener, then we want to develop a class that implements servlet context attribute listener interface. The key methods for this interface, methods that would be most helpful to us to work in this space and register our listener, is by implementing a few key methods, particularly attribute added, in other words, I want to take action when an attribute is added to the servlet context as an attribute. I'm listening for an attribute being removed. I would implement the attribute removed method. 
There's also a method for attribute replace, which does exactly what uh, the name implies, which is listen for an attribute value being replaced. Notice each of these methods also receive a servlet context attribute event, locally referenced here as SCAE. Within the implementation of any one of these methods from the servlet context attribute event object, we could call me methods such as get name, get value that return the name of the uh, attribute or the value of the attribute that's being added, removed, or replaced. If we want to write a session activation listener, we would write a class that implements HTTP session activation listener. Some key methods on this interface are session did activate, which is called after a session is created. There's also a method that we could override in this interface, session will passivate. This is called right before a session is destroyed, either they're destroyed by the container or uh, because the user has logged out and the session has timed out. Notice both of these methods receive an HTTP session event object. From there, for example, we could call the get session method on this local variable to give us a handle to the actual HTTP session that was firing this event. If we want to write a session attribute listener, in other words, we want to take action as attributes are added or removed from the current HTTP session, then we would write a Java class that implements HTTP session attribute listener. The key methods, as you might expect, the key methods on this interface would be attribute added, in other words, fire if an attribute is added to this session, the attribute removed method from this interface, also an attribute replaced method. Notice each of these methods receives an HTTP session binding event. The HTTP binding session or the HTTP session binding event has some handy methods to get the session, to get the name, in other words, the name of the attribute that has changed or was added or removed. There's also a get value method to retrieve the value of the attribute that's being added, replaced, or removed. To configure our listeners, to notify the system that we want to register our listeners, to notify the system that we're capable of and interested in handling certain events in the listener interface, we need to configure our listeners by modifying the WebXML or the deployment descriptor in our application and use the listener tag. For example, a very simple example of using the listener element in WebXML, here we're registering our listener, our listener class, and that's it. That's all we have to do. Uh, the implementation of the methods in our class are what get called by virtue of the fact that in this case we're, um, I assume, implementing session listener. A little understanding of the life cycle of listeners helps us understand what our Java application server is trying to do. When a web module starts up, servlet context listeners are notified in the order that they're registered in WebXML. When a web module shuts down, first the session activation listeners, if there are any, are notified, and then the servlet context listeners, in the order that they're registered in WebXML, are then notified. In other words, the events are fired if the methods are implemented. Let's take a look at creating a listener in our web application in Eclipse. So let's use Eclipse to create a listener and configure that listener to work within our web application so that the system can notify us of certain system events that we're interested in looking at because we want to execute some piece of business logic when the system notifies us that those events have occurred. So I'm going to right click on my web project and go to new and choose listener. I want to organize my code in a meaningful way. So I'm going to create a separate Java package for my listeners. Um, try and uh, name this so that it would be meaningful in organizing my code, such as simple listeners. And the name of the class is, let's call it demo listeners. No superclass is extended, um, but you'll notice because we're using the wizard 
to create our listener, when I click on the next screen, the wizard suggests to me the life cycle um, and events that I can capture in a standard Java listener, particularly focused on servlets. So what is it that I'm interested in looking at? I'm interested in looking at the life cycle of the servlet context. Remember, the servlet context is when the application is loaded or unloaded. I'm looking at um, the life cycle of a session. When is it that session is created? When is it that the uh, an attribute is added to the session? Um, I'm going to look at the life cycle of a request. When is it that uh, an attribute is added to the request? So I'm not going to do all the listeners. There's just certain things that I want to watch and maybe incorporate that event activity into my application. On the next screen, notice that the wizard is automatically suggesting that the interfaces that I need to implement are these, right? We've got this servlet context listener, HTTP session listener, attribute listener, and we've also got two listeners for servlet request. In Java, you can only extend one class. You can have only one superclass, but you can certainly implement multiple listeners. So I click Finish here. And the uh, Java editor opens and shows me my demo listener. Uh, the implementation for the class definition is written to implement the appropriate uh, interfaces that I'm interested in looking at. Because these are interfaces, I need to provide implementations of these methods. And so the tool is actually creating skeletons for various methods that need to be implemented for all the different interfaces. Now remember that another piece of configuration information that needs to be configured for our listener is to notify the system, in other words, create a configuration entity to notify the system that I've got a listener that is to be implemented for this application. Because I use the uh, wizard to create my listener, I should be able to see in the deployment descriptor if I expand it or if I actually open the file, I should see that in fact a listener has been added. In this configuration to notify the system that you've got listener code um, is just one element in WebXML. It's the listener element and contained in the listener element is the listener class, which is simply the fully qualified Java class name of your listener class. The wizard created this configuration entity for me because I stepped through the screens to stub out, not only stub out my listener code, but um, uh, create the configuration necessary in my WebXML. Okay. So let's just do some simple business logic to prove to ourselves that um, the listener code, that we are capturing the events that we're interested in looking at. Okay, So through the magic of copy and paste, I'm going to type some code and copy and paste other code in. Let's look at context event, context destroyed. I also have uh, context initialized. This is very interesting because this will fire this uh, uh, code. The logic I put here should fire, in other words, be executed when the servlet context is initialized. And remember, the servlet context is initialized when the web application is coming online. In other words, the server is loading it up. So um, I, you know, I don't want to be confused by all of my local variables being called arg0. But context initialized receives a servlet context event. And uh, you can reference it with the local variable. So um, I'm just going to print out some stuff. And I'm going to use the tool stuff. That's a technical term. I'm going to use the tool to tell me what kinds of things I can discover from the servlet context event. So let's uh, just give ourselves a label, context. Uh, servlet context initialize is what I like. Uh, better. Servlet context initialized. And what kind of information can we read 
from servlet context? Well, if I concatenate and I use my local variable and I use the content assist and use control, well, I don't even have to wait, uh, control space. Um, the tool uh, put it up for me. So let's see, on servlet context, this really can't be converted to string. I should be able to um, get, say, an initialization parameter, get servlet information. These will be returned to strings. This is meaningful information that uh, I can do a simple print out of. But notice I can also get from servlet context object, I can get attributes, get an attribute name, get the servlet context text itself. Um, Nah, I don't want to do that. That that would be in a uh, servlet path. Get the context path that would be returned as a string. So that's something simple. We're using system out print lens so we can see it in the log. Um, we're using the context event object to get the servlet context, and from there get the context path and print it out in the log. Um, so we're looking to see a couple of things here. We're looking to see that the event has been fired. Um, the, the event was triggered exactly when I think this event is going to be triggered, that I've properly registered to listen for this event and capture this event. And then what can I do with the various event objects um, that are passed into these methods? Okay, so that's one. Um, let's look at some of the others. I'm just going to compile, make sure I'm compiling correctly. Um, let's look at some of the other things. And, you know, I've generated this code. Session created, that might be interesting um, to get the session ID. Just so we can see in our code, do we have session created? Yes, we do, um, because that's the interface we're interested in working with. Just so we can see when a session is created, um, exactly when our logic is um, executed, and what kind of information we can get from the session event object that's passed in. What else uh, might I be interested in? Initializing the request. Okay, um, this is this is going to execute request initialized and request destroyed are going to execute through every request. So a session initialization event is only going to occur when the session is initialized or when attributes are added to the session or removed from the session, if those are the things that we were interested in. This time I'm not actually using local variables, so I don't care about changing it. Um, but I'm just going to print out initializing request. What else might be interesting? Uh, servlet context destroyed. Same thing as servlet context initialized, but this is only going to be executed when the application is coming offline. Um, so where do I have context destroyed? Here we have servlet context destroyed and um, very simple code. And let's see, um, I'm putting a couple, I'm, I'm actually providing implementation for a couple of these methods so that we can um, watch how they move through. Watch the order, make sure we understand um, the order of events make sure that we understand when these events get fired. Another one that's interesting is servlet request attribute event. In our application, we're actually adding an attribute to the request. So it would be interesting to be able to see when this event is fired and what information I can intercept on the request without actually modifying the request. So um, on attribute added on servlet request. Notice I have two attribute added methods that are necessary to implement because I, I implement an HTTP session um, listener. I have to implement attribute added even if I'm not doing anything. So I have to have that method body there on that interface. But I'm interested in servlet request attribute event. Um, I want to change my local variable because it's easier for me to keep them straight. I also think it's easier for my team members to read it. Okay, and save that. Anything else interesting um, that I thought might be interesting? Destroying requests. Uh, that's good. Okay, um, so we've got a couple of events that we're interested in watching. Loading up the servlet context 
um, adding an event to the session. Actually, I do think I want to add an event to the session. Well, no, uh, we'll do it later. Right now we're doing a uh, servant request attribute added. We've got our configuration information in WebXML. So we've created our listener element. Actually, the wizard created it for us to make us more productive. Now what I want to do is, and I want us to focus on, uh, when we test this, we run it on the server. We're not actually running the listener. What we're doing within our web application is running any web resource, anything that is gettable, anything that is retrievable, um, such as a servlet, um, run that and see how the listener is applied by the system. Okay, So if I expand my um, Java resources, I have a very simple, uh, well, it's, it's not simple much anymore. I have a servlet here relatively straightforward servlet and the only thing I've done is override the uh, or override the do get method and connect to a database gather up some data um, put it into a list and store the list in the request okay I should also we'll run it once but I've uh, added some code here to uh, watch the session our servlet right now is only working with the request scope and the request object. Um, let's see what happens in uh, our listener. Let's see what session events, if any, get fired, what request events, what servlet context events, uh, listener events get fired just running this application with our listener code as is. Notice I'm not changing any of the source code in my servlet. What I've done is create a listener and injected that behavior, that listening behavior, into my application by adding one simple element in my WebXML. My server needs to be republished. I like to see the publish separate from starting the server. And of course, it needs to be republished because I made changes to WebXML, so the tooling is uh, flagging me that I should republish the server. Keep in mind that one of the features of a server configuration is the ability to turn off automatically publish. If the, uh, the default is to automatically publish every time a change is made, that can slow your work down significantly. You just have to discipline yourself and remember to republish your application. The uh, JBoss test server certainly will republish your application when it starts up, but I prefer to see um, the publish separate from the startup of the server in trying to troubleshoot and isolate where my errors are. You may not have errors, but I occasionally have errors and I like to see them separate. So I'm going to right click on my server, choose run as, run on server, and watch what happens on the console. See if we can discover where our listening events are being fired by the system, the particular listener events that we injected uh, logic into it, even though our business logic is really right now just printing out to the log. So I get a return, the expected return, in the browser, but I'm going to expand this console window and see if we can um, track what it is we expected to happen. Okay. Notice um, when the application came online, uh, uh, the system loaded our application, we see servlet context initialized. We see as the request was being executed, initializing request. From the um, servlet code, we see a request attribute added because we overrode the attribute listener. Um, and we also see session created. Uh, the reason we see session created and we see uh, session ID is because the JSP by default is session aware. And so unless you set the session attribute, you deliberately set the session attribute in a JSP, um, the session is created in the JSP if it's not explicitly created in uh, the servlet. Okay, so what we've seen here is that the listener is listening for a session event, even though we didn't explicitly create one in our servlet code. Okay, now we did, let's double check, 
before we run this again, let's double check that we uh, are listening for session attributes. Attribute added on uh, session binding event. We didn't put anything in there. So let's use our basic code so we can copy and paste from attribute added on request. Let's use the same very sophisticated logic um, to look for information on an attribute being added to session. Okay, so let's call our local variable HSBE for eight, uh, HTTP session binding event. And I'm going to uh, rename this variable because I use copy and paste. Um, session ATR event and I'm going to now I'm not sure I can get uh, the name of the event we'll check because this is an HTTP session binding event versus a request attribute event um, but we'll see what we get uh, HSBE dot get name and so we'll see we should be able to print out the actual name. And so if you're curious, you can let the tool tell you on get name. Notice that it's uh, get the name of the event. It does return a string, so that will um, work. What I might be expecting is um, the name of the attribute that was added. Um, we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, actually, no, on the request event, we saw that the get name is actually returning the name of the attribute. So I would expect that the same thing without diving into the documentation, which, you know, highly trained developers never do, right? Is read the documentation uh, to find out exactly what get name does. I always like to try it once. If it doesn't work, then I go look at the documentation. Um, so instead of servlet request attribute, we'll specify servlet session attribute so we can distinguish our labels. And uh, close my browser so I don't get the browser windows confused. Let's run it again. Uh, but this time I'm going to actually add some, some very specific session code in the servlet itself. And remember, when we're testing listeners, we're not testing the listener code itself, we're testing that the listener code and the uh, behavior of the listener Java code is actually being injected into our application. So while we are specifically changing the source code here, it's just to demonstrate using session in addition to request. Our JSP is looking for our employee's attribute inside of that JSP, but we're also going to add it to session. And in the session space, we will create a variable of AMP just so we can see in our reading of these attributes which is in the request space and which is in the session space. So again, in order to test our listener code, we're not really running the listener code. We're going to run our servlet code where the listener behavior has been injected. So if I right click, I'm going to publish separate just because um, it's a discipline I learned a long time ago on a number of projects that I've worked on. And my build is successful. And I run the uh, servlet, run as, run on server. Now in our console, no errors. Whew, that's always good. The crowd goes wild. Uh, no errors. That's always good. We're always worried about that as developers. Oh, we've got an error. Okay, so what is it that we're looking at? Again, the application is reinitialized because it was redeployed by JBoss. Okay, uh, the request was initialized. The servlet request was added, which is what we expected. The session was created. Okay, um, we also have destroying servlet context, and we don't have the reinitialization. You know why? Because the browser is caching this request. So let's try it again. I'm just going to hit enter on the browser. Now I see what I was expecting to see. Remember in Eclipse, sometimes when you're doing this, running servlets or running JSPs and you're testing in the browser, sometimes the browser is caching, even though 
JBoss is reloading the application, we see that the uh, servlet context gets initialized, the request gets initialized, the session request is added, uh, the session is created, and notice that uh, we also have uh, the capturing of the event um, servlet session attribute. Oh, and I typo in my, my label. There you go. Um, don't you love it when you have logging messages with typos in them? But that's not of concern. Um, I'm sure that's never happened to any other uh, developer where they're trying to put messages in the log and they have a typo. That's very embarrassing. Um, it's not really. So let's see what happens on the server. Let's see what happens on our console if we actually uh, stop the application or remove the application or stop the server. Let's see if uh, we'll just stop the server here to see what happens on our console. See if we get, because I believe we were also listening for this uh, servlet context uh, destroyed, which we'd already seen when the application was shut down and opened again. But when the application is coming down because the server was um, shutting down, we should be able to see um, that the servlet context was being uh, removed. Right. So here we see in standard out, we see that the listener method that we implemented is actually being executed by the system even when the uh, server is unloading the application context, the servlet context, when the application server is shutting down. So that should give us an idea of uh, how to create a listener, what it is we're looking at, and how easy it is to inject listener behavior to ask the system to notify our application code when particular events occur because we have a, the need in the design of our applications, we may have the need to actually um, do some queries, execution of certain logic only when certain events are fired, not necessarily just with the interaction of the user. Also, pay close attention that in the listener interface, we're not modifying the request. We're not modifying the session. We're listening for the modification of the request. We're listening for the modification of the session in terms of our attribute listeners. So that's great.